welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're taking a look at a game that some of you might find a little hard to stomach. We're looking at Tummy Ache. Released in 1983 by McDonald 345, this game was actually made for them by Orchard Toys. Since this release, Orchard Toys themselves have actually released this game year after year after year. Each iteration of the game getting slightly cuter, slightly more child friendly, where the bugs and the insects and things are becoming more cartoony and more cute looking with big googly eyes. But this is the original, where things are much more realistic and a little bit more gross. Now Orchard Toys is a company that makes very, very simple games for young children. Mostly educational games or games that I suppose introduce children to playing games and the mechanics of playing games. So they're very, very simplistic. In the school that I work, we've got lots of Orchard games around because they tend to focus on spelling and numeracy. But this one doesn't do anything educational like that. This one is all about teaching children to match shapes and pictures. It's a very, very simple game and one that I normally wouldn't be doing a review on for adults. But for me, this is just a shot of pure nostalgia. I came across this in a charity shop and it's one of those moments where you see something and you're just like, Oh my goodness, I absolutely remember that. I'd forgotten all about that, but I remember playing that. And it's just that rush of memory coming back. It's a real mystery, this game to me. I don't remember when I played this, but it brings back memories of something to do with visiting an ex primary school head teacher, something to do with sitting in the back of a car on a rainy day in a street in Edinburgh. And there's also the lion, the witch and the wardrobe mixed up in there somewhere. So I don't know, but I've got all these kind of memories that are associated with this game. And so there's that real kind of heady mix of nostalgia and mystery for me. It's not a game I would recommend, but it's really got that nostalgia and childhood memory for me. Vague memory, right enough, but it brings that out. Let's take a closer look at what you actually do in this game. The game comes with four of these place setting uh, boards, and these are just simple cardboard here with the game name on the back, and they've obviously just been printed in black, white, and shades of blue. There's no full color on this, although the later versions of this game by Orchard Toys have got full color game boards. The cardboard is fairly thin, um, but these have held up well over the years. And we've got a whole pile of cards of different types of food which can go onto those place settings. There are four edible drinks, orange, black currant, water and milk. Four edible sides which go with the knife, so we've got rice, baked potatoes, boiled potatoes and chips. Four main dishes which go in the center of our plate, sausages, fish fingers, steak and kidney pie or chops. Another four sides that go on our fork side this time, peas, carrots, baked beans and tomatoes, and four edible desserts, jelly, ice cream, strawberries, and I think this is meant to be a kiwi fruit. And then we've also got a whole range of these tummy ache foods. These are the ones that are inedible. You don't want these. And this is where the game is fun. As a kid, as a young child, I loved these. Just the imagination of these horrible things being on your plate and you having to eat or drink them. I just thought it was such a good idea, such good fun. I just liked disgusting things as a kid and these really appealed to me. The thought of drinking 
the muddy water with tadpoles squiggling about in it was just gross and I love that kind of thing. So we've got tadpoles, we've got, I don't know what this is, but you obviously would not want to drink it, something black and bubbling. We've got weevils on overgrowing potatoes, we've got, I don't know quite what this is, it's either like bacon rind or um, potato peel, we've got an old leather boot properly dragged up from the bottom of a pond, uh, we've got an already eaten fish with some bones there, we've got some dead flowers, because of course you'd want to eat that, and we've got a caterpillar here eating your salad, a spider, spider web and some half-eaten apple core and some mouldy black banana skin. None of this you would want to eat and if you're a young kid this would gross you out. So to play this game each player takes a place setting board. I've got two here because I'm going to show you this in a two-player game and the cards are all shuffled up and placed face down on the table. The first player takes the card from the top of the deck. Oh, stuck together, there we go. And takes it and matches it onto the appropriate space on their board. Second player, they've got, oh, tummy ache. So at this point, everybody has to shout, tummy ache! And they have to play that onto their board. Tummy ache cards are bad, they don't want that, but they've got that, they're gonna have to get rid of that at the first opportunity. They cannot win until they've got a full plate of edible food. So tummy ache is bad. This player now, they've got a tummy ache as well, oh dear, everybody again shout. Tummy ache! And it gets placed into the correct position. Next player, they've got, oh no, another one. Tummy ache! Everybody shouts out again and it gets placed down. Then to this player, they've got, oh, they've got another glass. Now, at this point, because they've already got a glass, they could swap it over if they wanted to, just personal preference. It's not going to do anything as far as the game goes. If they're not gonna take it though, they could place it face up in another discard pile. On the next player's go, they can either take a card from the top here, or they can take a card from the discard pile. Now because they've got a tummy ache that they want to get rid of, we're going to get rid of that tummy ache and replace it with that one there. Now it's this person's go, they're going to take one, it's a jelly, they're going to put that there. This player is going to take one, it is, oh, fish and chips, not fish and chips, fish fingers even, and then back to this player, oh, that's no good, so we're going to have to discard that. This player here, though, needs that, so they're going to pick that up and swap it over. So they have now managed to get rid of all of their tummy ache cards, which they didn't want. Back to this player. One card only. And they've got carrots. That will fit nicely in there. Back to this player. They're going to pick it up. Oh, it's a tummy ache. They don't want that they're going to place it down in the discard pile. Back to this player, that's no good to them, they're going to get rid of that. This player here, they've got milk, oh, they've already got water, so they're going to get rid of that. That card is no good to this player, so they're going to pick up from the pile. Oh, chops, yes, we can get rid of that tummy ache card there and discard that. Back to this player here, they've got, oh no, it's a tummy ache, but they don't need that, so they're going to get rid of it. And over here, this player, oh, tomatoes, mm, could swap it if I wanted to, but not much point, get rid of that. This player here needs that though, so they're going to take it from this discard pile instead of choosing a face down card. Have that and now both players just need one more item. This one here, gonna turn it over. Oh, it's a tummy ache, but we don't need that. Get rid of it. This player here, 
turn it over, that's no good, get rid of it, this player here, turn it over, there we go, we have got rice, and this is the first player to complete their whole table setting, so this player is the winner. So as you can see, this is a really, really simple game. There's no real interaction with any of the other players. There's no tactics to it. You are really simply turning over cards and deciding whether you need them or not. Which really is not the most interesting game mechanic in the world at all. And to be honest, personally, I don't really particularly like card games anyway. But this, for me, is all about the nostalgia. It's not one that I'm going to be recommending to you. If you've got very young children who you're trying to introduce to gaming, maybe. But overall, I would say stay clear of this one. For me though, it's a definite one that I do want for my collection. I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I've got it. But that's not the same as being a good game. If you do want this game, it is really cheap. There are lots and lots, as I said, Orchard Games has been releasing this pretty much non-stop since 1983. So there are loads of different versions of this available. They're only gonna cost you around about four or five pounds for a copy of this game. This one, the original 1983 version, is much harder to find, but if you can find it, it's not a lot more expensive. It's not one that I'm recommending you get, but there's plenty more coming up that I do recommend you get. So until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.